So I'm finally filming the video of restoring the underside of the E46 and installing the six speed and M3 rear end. And I was just thinking about it. And one of the biggest questions I get asked all the time, like almost every other six months at this point, someone asked me how the rear end is holding up. And this is because right after I got the E46, I made a video attempting to weld in reinforcement plates because as I'm sure most of you guys know, the E46's rear end subframe is known to crack. And in my case, mine was about as bad as it gets. So the first one, as you can see, it's got some good cracks, a huge one going up right here, but we will get all of those welded. And then this is the really bad one, which you could hear if you got in the car at all, you could hear it clunk. And obviously you can see that it completely ripped out of the car with another huge one going up right here. So we're gonna have to hammer that mounting piece back in. Here's this piece, I finally got it lined up. It took a ton of tries just hammering things back together, but I think this is gonna work pretty well. I went ahead and just tacked it up here for now. So we'll get all those welded on and then we will weld the reinforcement plates on top and see how it looks. So here we are, I have primered and sprayed some undercoating on everything and this is what the plates look like welded in. I did have to do some grinding to make it flat so that the subframe will fit flush, but I think it is going to hopefully hold up pretty well and not crack again. I actually love update videos like this, so I'm gonna show you guys a couple things that I did wrong and how I'm cleaning them up now to where hopefully they'll last longer and just how they look in general. So so starting with this side because I already kind of started fixing up that side. One thing I wanted to mention that I screwed up is I didn't want to have to buy seam sealer because one, it's really expensive and two, I just have silicone sitting around. So I decided to put silicone around it instead of seam sealer. But what I should have done is painted it before because I'm really weird about rust, especially now. So it started to rust a bit because I didn't coat the welds or anything with anything. So one thing I'll be doing this time is I'll be cleaning up the welds a little bit and then I'll be spraying them with some like rust primer and then painting them and then putting some silicone and stuff on. But as far as the cracking goes, I'm honestly extremely impressed. I saw a couple videos when I was looking into doing this that mentioned they were doing it with epoxy and I was kind of sketched out about that. But also when I was doing this, I was too scared to take out the gas tank because I didn't want to have to take too much apart and not know how to put it back in. So we only welded most of them like halfway and I'm getting zero new problems. Like there's a crack back here, but that's because the gas tank was here so we couldn't get to it last time and it hasn't spread. So I'm extremely impressed and I think you'd probably be good to epoxy. But since this time, it's not that I'm not scared anymore. I'm still scared because this car is at the point where I'm not sure if I'll ever be able to get it back together. But this is another spot where I messed up because I should have this completely flat so that the bushings can sit here, but I didn't do that. So I'll be doing that this time. But yeah, as far as the subframe goes, let's finish welding these up, as well as a couple other spots that I found that were cracking, like these ultra sketchy jack points. Oh, I want to get a couple tacks on those at least. And sadly, I'm not going to be filming any more welding because... Um... Another thing I wanted to mention, I probably shouldn't be cutting into the floor of the trunk so bad, but I saw this down here. This is the side that was so bad before. And luckily the little tack job up there is still holding together, but down here, it's so bad. So I at least wanted to try to weld this a little bit more if I can and get some of this tacked back down to the ground. As well as obviously, spraying whatever rust preventative stuff I can into here to hopefully prevent it from getting worse. Alrighty, now that we've got down some of the shittiest welds that money can buy, we're another step closer. So this is how I'm leaving everything now that I've got it grinded down. The biggest thing, like I said, that I didn't learn from last time is 
I made where the bushings are gonna sit is as flat and flush as I could have. I don't really care about those spots over there. And then on this side, same thing. And here is the one from the beginning that rusted all the way out of the car. You can see the little bit of reconstruction done to it. But I honestly think this is one of the best looking ones now. Not too bad. And like I said last time, I didn't notice that I had these, but I got those kind of tacked together again. And on this side, I did some, ta some more tags. So, now that all that's done, I'm taking my rust primer. I really like the rust -Oleum Professional line for stuff like this. So I'm gonna give it some of this on each one. And I'm also gonna be giving some of this to all these little rust spots. So now that we've got all of these with some paint, silicone, and more paint, I'm gonna go up under the trunk. This is how I'm leaving these. And I'm gonna take some of this internal frame coating and spray as much as I can up in here. And then I'll try to tack these shut again. Uh, and after that, I'll see you guys in the next update five years from now.